Welcome to the Vine Resources Podcast Show. I'm today joined by Alistair Tom. He's the Managing Director of FreeSat. Thank you, Alistair, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. No problem. Well, look, Alistair, uh, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about uh, FreeSat. Um, and I'm going to jump into some of the questions. But first, just perhaps you could give us just a, a brief introduction, a bit more about who you are and uh, your role at FreeSat, if that's all right. I guess FreeSat is a free satellite uh, subscri- non-subscription service um, with about 2 million homes in the UK. So to kind of give you a bit of context, there's probably about 4 million people uh, view our service every week. Um, I guess what do we offer? FreeSat is a hybrid television service where we offer probably over 200 um, of the best free-to-air channels available. Um, we also offer a large range of um, on-demand services, so there's some most compelling ones around at the moment, including things like iPlayer, Netflix, yep. um, and we um, allow people the ability to remote record through our companion app, which I think, when you think about it, is pretty compelling when you actually, vast majority of viewing in the UK is on free to channels, so, yes. you know, if you look at VARB reports, there's always telling you the vast majority of people on Sky yep. basically watch the main channel. So, I think yes. we offer a really compelling service, um, but you know, we're always looking at ways to improve, and um, it's really exciting that recently we um, added Dave yes. to our platform, which is something we've been looking, trying to get for a long time, and we've got discoveries, two of Discovery Channels coming up in the next month or Fantastic. two, as well as a new catch-up service. So, as a service, I think it's really exciting, and part of the reason I'm there is I really enjoy the fact that we're a dynamic company looking to improve. Yeah. Um, I'm originally from Sky, so I did a grad trainee scheme there, starting out in finance. Yeah. Not in Scotland, you mean down here? No, not, not the other Sky. <laughs> no, in the, <laughs> in the Austin Towers, as it was. So, um, as a young person, graduated, probably not the best location, but um, it was a really good time. Um, I then left there, did a lot of work as consultant, um, mainly for KPMG. So, I've worked um, all over the world, doing a lot of exciting um, and very projects and then um, came to join FreeSat originally as the uh, finance director and then a couple of years ago became the managing director so I guess that's been uh, really exciting for me and it's really exciting for me at the moment because there's a lot of things changing and I think it gives me a really good opportunity to kind of help evolve FreeSat so that it can survive and thrive in that new changing world. Yeah I totally agree and just just touch on that where does where does your customer uh, customers fit within, you know, with, with the other operators and the other suppliers in the market out there. So what's your, what's your, what's your typical customer? So, um, I mean, we have a wide range of um, people coming to us. I mean, a lot of our customers come from Sky. Typically, they would be people who have um, at the lower end subscription and they're kind of looking at their value for money. So that's one of the most common things. But um, we get people from the other platforms too. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. I'd love just to share. We'll always ask our listener for our, for our listeners, you know, what a typical day for you as the managing director looks like in in your business. Right. So, I guess the first thing to say is we're a pretty small company, so I don't really have a typical day. It's pretty varied. So, to give you kind of, we're about fifty people. Yeah. I guess the overriding theme I'd say is a lot of my day is spent communicating people. So, for example, I could well spend a little bit of time talking with the sales and retail guys. And we'll be looking at, say, how many boxes we've sold, how well we're rechanging retails, retailers, thinking about which retailers we should go into, yeah. thinking about how we adjust some of that. I could then um, spend time talking to our manufacturers, our set-top box manufacturers or television manufacturers, and looking about opportunities um, to work with them and to prove that. So, for example, I was in Korea and Japan quite recently, meeting them face-to-face. Another big focus for me is content. So I spend a lot of time every day speaking to our content guys, yep. talking about our pipeline, kind of great uh, new channels we could get to our platform, looking at opportunities, thinking about on demand. Um, and then I guess, what's the other things? Um, also, t- we have an area that we are, so as a business, if I step back, we are trying to become more commercially focused. And one of the areas we're looking at is our international business. So FreeSat, um, in its Generation 2 platform, created something that has quite a lot of value, and we're looking to work with other organisations to help them develop similar hybrid platforms. So, for example, at the moment, we're working with a, an organisation in Ireland, and we're working with another one in Africa. So we're always thinking about that as well. Fantastic. And, and look, just touching on that, mm-hmm. I'm just curious to know, what would stop a company like FreeSat from, from actually uh, becoming a content producer themselves? Um, so we're seeing this a lot at the moment. 
That's a good question. I guess <laughs> that's a really good question. I guess from our perspective at the moment, we're focused on being a platform. We think there is a real value for platforms, and our focus is actually on aggregating our content for our customers yeah. and actually creating the best service. And so I think our focus should be on what we know what we're doing. I think if I got into content production, I think that's a new area for me. It'd be quite high risk. <laughs> no, fair enough. And uh, I thought it was quite topical with all the changes yeah. going on in the marketplace right now. Can you name a person that's perhaps had a tremendous impact on you as a leader? Perhaps someone that might be, or might be a mentor to you, for example. Yeah. Um, so I think that's I think that's a really good question. So when I was starting out at KPMG, um, I spent quite a lot of time working with um, a partner there who really um, got me learning about how style and, influ in and influencing people are really important, and that's a key kind of one of the um, foundation stones of becoming a leader. And so he's he spent a lot of time explaining to me about how you need to flex your style, and you need to understand how other people think, and you need to work with them, mm -hmm. and you need to understand the value of communicating to people and the value of facilitating discussions and how you get people bought into what you want to do, yes. and working with people and creating team and motivating them. And I guess that was that sort of time I spent with him was really really important to me. It sort of started me on the journey of actually being able to um, manage teams effectively, mm -hmm. and I guess of um, start to end up I guess in the role I currently have. Fantastic. And I mean, employee engagement is just so important for organizations and it yeah. can get trickier, you know, even even with, with 50 people, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you do from the top to keep your employees engaged? So for me, I think it's it base is based around two key things, transparency and um, communication. So we communicate, or I communicate particularly, as much as I can with people. So we meet every week. There's only 50 of us, which actually does allow us to do that. So when I work to very large global companies, that's sort of less possible. So we meet on a Monday every week, and we have what's called a stand-up, and we talk about things coming up yep. and what we're going to do. We also meet regularly in team meetings, and I talk a lot about our strategy and kind of ideas and where we're going. And I try and share as much as I actually can with our people. And one of the things I kind of realised is you can't communicate too much to people. You have to say a lot of the same things similarly. And I guess the final thing I do is um, I spend quite a lot of my time actually just talking to people in the company, whether that be formally or informally. So every day I will sort of talk to a couple of people um, anywhere and over a week speak to, speak to most people because actually I actually want to know our people as individuals. And I think that really helps um, them feel motivated yep. and also it really helps them feel that they genuinely can talk to me if there's anything they want to talk about. And and I think that's really important and um, I see this becoming more and more of an issue, whether it's for employees or even mm. suppliers to the company yeah, or, your, or your third party contractors. What do you yeah. think is the biggest challenge facing leaders today? Um, so, I think the biggest challenge is actually uncertainty. Um, and I know that's always the case to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but I think that's probably increasing more than it has um, in the past, and I think the industry is becoming sort of increasingly characterised by, rightly or wrongly, by large global organisations um, who are starting to um, look at doing things differently. And I think for us as a small company, um, we need to think really carefully about the kind of things we invest in and what we can afford to invest in that actually grows our business and actually appeals to our customers. Yeah. What's the, the, the best piece of business advice you, that you've ever received? Uh, Best piece of advice I've ever received is quite simple. It's make a decision. Um, <laughs> I think so typically um, people become kind of paralysed by indecision. I think a lot of people sort of, sort of find it difficult. I think it's probably more important to make a decision and work out if that decision is not quite right and yeah. make a change quickly. I think if you don't make a decision, you'll never find that out. One. Agreed. And I think two, then, you know, actually I think it's easy to sort of think you need more information yeah. and actually you just need to make the best decision you can with the information you have available at that time and be confident in it. I think when I think about whether I need more information I always challenge myself about will that actually change the decision I'm likely to make or not. Yeah so. I think I, I, I just wrote a note there and I thought procrastination that, that yeah. is just great advice there because I see this every day so that's really insightful. How do you how do you help a new employee uh, in your company understand the culture so for us, um, I think cultural fit is really important in any organisation. And for all the companies I've sort of worked with or had time with in the past, I think it's probably the most important thing in many ways. Yeah. Um, so for us, it starts right at the recruitment process. So, you know, you come to our offices, when you see our offices, you kind of get a feel for the kind of company we are. Company we are. It's one big 
uh, flat open space, um, people are dressed really informally. When we do our interviews, we talk about culture quite a lot. We talk about um, the kind of organisation we are. Mm -hmm. When people join us, uh, we also have an induction um, the first day or so. We actually go through some of that in more detail. And then we make sure in the first week or so that they have meetings with people all across the different parts of the business, no okay. matter where they're recruited, um, so that they actually get a feel for different types of people in the company and the kind of different uh, parts of our business. Because, for example, we're a bit small, we're pretty diverse. So, you know, we've got, we've got lawyers, we've got accountants, we've got some hardcore developers and coders, yeah. we've got some um, creative marketing, we've got some... Um, journalist types who are doing showcase recommendations, um, we've got some digital marketers, we've got a very wide range of different types of people. Yeah. And so I think it's really important that they actually understand that um, in spite of that, we actually work really well together. And I really want everyone when they come in to kind of get immersed in that as quickly as possible. That's fantastic. And that's such an important thing as, as the business grows. What's the one mistake you witness leaders um, making more frequently than others, do you think? Um, so, I think, and it goes back to one of something I was talking about briefly earlier, um, in an ever-changing world mm -hmm. and where things are, I guess the speed of change is increasing, it's not recognising um, the need to change early enough mm -hmm. and actually the need to adapt. And I think sometimes um, you need to be slightly brave, mm -hmm. but I think actually if you're unable to recognise the need to change and to accept that you're continually in a world where you have to change and adapt, then I think your future is always going to look um, somewhat bleak. Yeah, absolutely. And what what do you see? You know, the the, the market's changing very very fast, rapidly mm. every every day. The industry is changing quickly. Yeah. How will that affect your ability to attract and and more uh, more importantly retain you know your your top talent? So for me, in a, in our company, I actually think the change is a positive and actually is a you know it's it's a something that attracts a lot of people. So you know, absolutely. I think the dynamism is really appealing to most people. I think when I think about the kind of um, company we are, we are relatively small. Mm -hmm. um, and so we don't have very, you know, we have job descriptions, but they're not as clearly um, um, marked as they might be in a larger company. So, um, and we have a finite amount of budget and we're always thinking, how do we compete with organisations like Sky who have a lot more money than us? And what that means is we need to think laterally, we need to be dynamic, and we need to come up, be innovative in the things we do. And for me, people who are interested in that kind of culture um, love coming to work for us. And for me, I haven't actually found it too hard to attract people. Um, retaining is always going to be slightly harder for a small company. There's a limit to what you can do in terms of uh, moving people around. Yeah. And we don't have this in multiple divisions. Yeah. Having said that, quite a lot of our people have been with us quite a few years. Um, and I think, for me, I'm okay with people coming in, doing a really good job for three or four years, moving on to find their next challenge. Yeah. That actually means it gives us an opportunity to bring new people in, and actually sometimes they come in with new ideas, new ways of doing things, and actually continually revitalises your company. Absolutely. And, and if, you, if you had your, I say this, your time again, <laughs> but if you had your time again, you were, you, you know, we've given your 20-year-old self-advice, you know, within the industry or, with, you know, what you were going to do next, what, what, would, what advice would you give yourself? Um, I guess my father, when I left university, was very keen on saying, you know, it's really important you have a career plan. Whenever you have an interview, whenever you do something, you should have a plan, you should think about what you want to do for the next 20 years. And I kind of listened to that a bit initially. I think what I'd say is don't worry about any of that. I think it's really important you um, get yourself a job, really focus on doing a good job in every job you do, and take opportunities when they come. And you know what? The future will work out okay. I agree with that. The future will certainly find a way. <laughs> That's what, well, look, thank, thank you so much, Alex. It's really great to share this information uh, with, our, with our listeners. Um, and I really appreciate you coming in on the show. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. Really no, good to meet you. Thank you very much.